Hey, we're your hosts, Nick Smith. And Kylie Joe Smith. And today's episode is called Resource. Where we at? Where we at, though? I had the wrong page open. Ah. Uh, that's okay. It is. But what we're talking about is Christ <laughs> and the scarcity mindset. We're just going to keep rolling with okay, it. Okay, that's good. Um, but before we get into everything that we're going to talk about today, um, stop what you're doing because we're about to ruin the image oh, and the strategy. I'm just hey. kidding. Um, no, stop what you're doing <laughs> and share this. If you're listening on the um, audio format, um, share it. If you're watching the YouTube, first off, share. thank you. But um, sure. make sure you're subscribing. Share this. It's down here. I don't know where it is. <laughs> it's. It, I think it's, it's on your about side. I think right it's on your side. This way. Like somewhere right near here. near there. <laughs> um, so make sure that you are uh, sharing that yes. so that everybody can jam out with you. Yes, and with you. With you. If you don't remember, we talked about the single release and tour being rescheduled due to Schedule. the pandemic. <laughs> as many things the rona the rona as many things are rescheduled that is one of them yes um but cool thing technology is amazing and we have done um by the time you see this we will have done two live facebook concerts yes and so um keep an eye on the kylie joe music page that is a my page if you would like to um be a part of that you can watch us do music live it's kind of cool i don't yeah, know yeah it's pretty awesome yep. um and then last little bit pre-orders are over so if you did not get one of these dope shirts the uh, b-ball out. shirts then you're not part of the club and also <laughs> we have our keep america kind no sorry make, make america make kind america. boom well we should also keep it kind too with the yeah, nxm but you gotta make it kind first before you can keep it kind um, so if you didn't get one of those, you're going to have to wait because we're not going to start selling those right away, but we will have some new merch mm -hmm. available coming, um, after Easter, Lord willing, everything calms down and things yes. get back to normal here in a few months. We're going to have more merch. Um, yes. and we will be still doing our anniversary giveaway. Uh huh. That's we are be hitting so cool. one year this month. Yeah. One That's year. That's crazy. So if you haven't listened to all of our episodes from the past year, go back and You've check them out. You've got a catalog. And actually, if you have friends who it's like, I don't know if they want to listen to episodes, like recent episodes, you can always share with them one of the old ones. Like yes. the, one of the ones, the most popular ones that we have that's been downloaded is new podcast who dis. It's like our first first podcast yeah and so like you could send them to that one that has like intro to who we are yeah it we don't have videos for a lot of the older ones no but um, it gives them a kind of i don't know kind of a, a little taste of it's like an intro you good over there about. yeah i was just fixing that okay awesome cool. um All so right. yeah that's happening so let's talk about today today resource god or christ and the scarcity mindset so mm -hmm. this came about because uh first off kylie joe and i went grocery shopping mm. for, for the past few weeks um whenever we need to run errands i'm running out like we're doing a supply run on walking dead it's just normally me yeah. and so and I thankfully go you don't have to like bash anything's head in i don't have to it's just like bonus points <laughs> so if i wanted to then like i could practice yeah exactly but um this last week kylie joe went with me and realized how crazy um yeah. the stores were well it was when we went for our for our anniversary we yes. went out for our anniversary and i think we mentioned this last time we we're like oh while we're out yeah might as well get some pull-ups for our child <clears throat> and it was the first time i'd been in the store yeah um because we also were, were taking advantage of the grocery pickup because it's new to our area mm -hmm. a lot of y'all have had pickup and delivery for a for a time it's new to us. And actually now because of the virus, they have um, changed the hours and limited the number of deliveries. So mm -hmm. it's actually a lot harder to get pickup. But um, all that to say, we went into the store and I was like, oh my goodness. Yeah. It's like, you know, the, what's that movie? Uh, Trolls, mm -hmm. the little troll that goes, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt in the store. I was like, Throwback. That's oh how you know we have gosh. children is because we reference trolls. Yeah. Yes. Whenever we can. It's, it's an, it's an awesome show. But um, like, that was what I, I felt like walking through. I was like, no, that's real. Yeah. That's really real. Really, really. People real. are really, really hoarding this. Really, really, really. Like really. for real, real. Not for play play. Not for play. So play. what, um, what hit us was this, there's a mindset, there's a scarcity mindset that people function under mm -hmm. and the scarcity mindset says, um, there's not enough resources in, yeah. in the world. Yeah. And so I need to hoard as many resources as possible so mm -hmm. that I have enough for me and mine. Yeah. Because if I don't keep these resources, then you're going to get them and then I'll never have them. 
And so Ugh. it's this. And you run, won't share them with me. And you're not going to share. And I'm definitely not going to share them with you because if yeah. I share them with you, then I don't have them for me. And I have to share with more people. If I share with one, I got to share with all. That's that old uh, elementary school. Did you bring enough gum for everybody? Oh, did you bring enough, did toilet, you bring paper enough toilet paper for, <laughs> for the whole class? <laughs> for the whole neighborhood? Yeah. If you don't have enough. <laughs> if everybody's bottoms on your street are not clean, <laughs> yours cannot it's, be clean. It's your fault. It's your um, fault. But it's a scarcity mindset and it doesn't fit in the Christian worldview. Mm. And so the, the scarcity mindset doesn't fit the Christian worldview. How, and like how, yeah. y'all, I'm just clearing my throat. That ain't the runner. Just let y'all know. <laughs> you don't have a temperature. You're good. I mean, you don't have a fever. <laughs> you have a temperature, but you don't have a fever. You have a temper. I've just got a temper. Um, how do I reason? Say that again. I'm sorry. I didn't how hear. do you, I guess I'm not trying to be the devil's advocate here. But Please don't. You don't how, need no, no. But how do you argue for that when there is a very clear, like there's a physical lack yeah in some areas like how do you how do you reckon that so the the argument for um the scarcity mindset not being a christian part of the christian worldview uh it comes from historical christianity but it also comes from, straight from scripture so like um jesus when he was telling the parables when he's talking about how we're supposed to treat our neighbor he tells us like if somebody sues you for your your uh, cloak, mm. you know, give them your tunic also. Like if he <laughs> if he's if somebody's suing you mm -hmm. and somebody is, or somebody's robbing you, mm -hmm. basically like give them more than they asked for. Wow! Like what Jesus is telling us is the way that we treat others, even if somebody's being greedy and stingy, mm -hmm. we overgive, we yeah. serve, we're generous we people. Yeah, we bless people. Yeah, and um, the reason is because we can't look at the things of this world as our source. We have to understand that that God is our source. The things that we have are resources. Mm -hmm. They're things that we get from the grace of God. Yeah. He allows us the ability to, to make money. Some people right now not making money. They're struggling. Mm -hmm. Some churches right now, people aren't tithing Yeah, um, because people are scared. And so what they do is they clam up with their resources Yeah, and they, they clam up because they think, well, once this is gone, I'll have no more. Because what they're looking at is their own ability, their own innate ability to provide for themselves. Yeah. Or they're looking to their to their job or they're looking to um, the local grocery store. Mm -hmm. Like they're they're looking at things and saying, Okay, well when that's out, there's no hope. Wow. Like I'm looking at this materialistic thing and thinking that is my source. So that then becomes the idol. Yeah. Like the the object itself, the creation is now being worshipped. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's being leaned upon. There's faith being put in, into the object so that it's, um, it's a false, I guess the, the idol would be the false sense of security. Okay. That, yeah. That we yeah. get from having these resources. Yeah. Um, because we think that it's going to stop something from happening. It's going to mm -hmm. stop something bad from happening if we have all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But what's crazy is I remember my mom saying, uh, as much like every time we wake up, she would say like, you know, God woke you up in your right mind, you know, mm, give him praise. Yeah. And I'd be like, of course he woke. Like, what do you mean? I woke up. I'm not, <laughs> how sick. else is I'm he going to wake me up? Exactly. I'm not crazy. Like, but the fact that you're able to wake up fully functioning mm -hmm. is a gift from God. Yeah. It, and so anything beyond that, like the fact that you have strength in your limbs is only by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. And so when you start to look at well, I have to work because if I don't work, then I don't make money. And if I don't make money, I can't provide. Wait a second. Who gave you the ability to, to work from the beginning? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because God has to be the foundation. He has to be the source of all of your resources. Yeah. But it's hard because we, we tend to compartmentalize God and say, well, he's the source of my salvation. He's the source of wow, yeah. like my relationship with my church family. He's, mm -hmm. he's like a relational source and an eternal source, but we don't see him as the, as the also immediate source yeah. of the things we need. And, and when you actually, like, if you spend any time in the church around saints who have been at this for a while, you'll hear testimony of God providing things miraculously in the mm -hmm. moment. Um, we also look to God as like a physical healer. Yeah. So like if things get bad enough, I might call on him to repair what, what maybe I, or, or fill the void of what I don't have anymore. Mm -hmm. But until then I got this. Yeah. Like God doesn't need me. And we, we've talked about this in Bible study. I'm like, God doesn't need me to come to him with my issue. Yeah. Like I'll just go to the store. Yeah. I'll just go and, and find some way of procuring it for myself. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, it's, I, I feel like it comes from separating God into different, people like into different, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. in a, not in a, in a weird way, but like, well, there's God that I worship on Sunday mornings, mm -hmm. 
And then there's this God that I've heard of, you know, that does these things for other people. Um, but I don't personally know God to be the one who provides my paycheck. Yeah. Cause I don't see, uh, he's not the one signing the paycheck. He's not the one working every day. It's me. Right. It's I'm, me. I'm doing it. Yeah. But th- that men that mentality, um, I don't know. We have, I think in our, our today day and age, we've got this separation of holy and, and secular sacred mm, and secular. Yeah. Right. And so we look at, okay, God is for Sundays. Um, God is for, uh, mm. when you're really sick. Yeah. God is for when you're really in need, then he comes through, but all the rest, you know, Monday through Friday, um, any other minor thing, he trusts me to deal with that. So he's wow. not even involved. He just allows me. Um, so I deal with the secular stuff mm-hmm. and then he steps in for the sacred stuff for the holy stuff. But what we forget is that mm. everything is sacred to God. Yeah. Like everything that he calls us to do as his people are things that we're supposed to be relying on him for. Yeah. And so when you understand that, that God is your source, um, everything has to come from that mindset of like, yeah, I was the one who worked, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't have had the strength to work. I wouldn't yeah. have found the job apart exactly. from God. Yeah. Um, my boss doesn't have to schedule me, mm-hmm. but God gave me favor with my boss so that I'm scheduled. And yeah. all you essential employees right now, God is looking out yeah. for you right now, especially yeah. um, because God in his grace has allowed for certain people to, to operate still in their nine mm-hmm. to five. There are people mm-hmm. that want to go to work right now. Yeah. They can't, that, that must stay home. And so we have to stop separating the God of my physical needs from the God of my spiritual needs. Mm-hmm. It's the same God. Yeah. We need the same Christ. He is our source yeah. in the and he, this. and he doesn't run out like one of mm, there's a scripture that he doesn't um he's the god of the cattle on a thousand hills right and i i yell that a lot in our house or i won't yell it but like i'll be like oh <laughs> i'm not gonna worry because i serve the god of the cattle on a thousand hills that's right he does not run out he doesn't say and he doesn't say this with us as his children he doesn't say it to those who aren't yet his children yeah. because his grace to wake up his grace to go to work, his grace to travel, his grace to um, educate and be educated. That grace is for all. Yeah. He allows all people to experience his grace. It doesn't run out. That's right. Um, but we, I, I think it's not just the church that does it. I think those of us who um, have been in the church for a while, we can still do it mm-hmm. where we, we look to God as being limited in his resources because, well, we can't get too many people in the church because then we won't have enough room and we won't have enough this. And so we can still do it, but it happens outside the church as well. Yeah. And I think the fear that motivates that, um, is intensified when we don't have Christ as our rock. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Well, and the, like that's where the church gets it from. We start to reflect the world Mm. because the world functions, especially in, in, um, societies that run on physical, tangible resources. Um, society runs on the scarcity mindset. We don't have enough land. We don't have enough medicine. We don't have enough ventilators. You know what I mean? Yeah. And these are real issues. And yeah. I'm not, I'm not diminishing those in a tangible way. But when you, as an individual, start to look at um, the the medical industry, mm-hmm. or you start to look at education industry, you start to look at your your job. You start to look at these places as the ultimate source of your whatever. Mm-hmm. Then you miss the fact that. Um, just because God doesn't provide in the way that you planned him to yeah. doesn't mean that God can't provide because God is the source. Yeah. He, he doesn't have, he doesn't need resources. Right. And so like the difference would be like looking at Walmart and saying, well, Walmart's out of, um, toilet paper. So I guess we, we can't have toilet paper. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but God doesn't need a retail store. Like right. If God wanted to, you can order your TP directly from the producer. It's true. Like if God wanted to give you your blessing, he's not going to bring it necessarily. He doesn't have to bring it through a third party. Right. He can directly Oof. bless you. He can. And so God is a source, not yes. a resource. Yes. Sometimes he uses other, uh, me- other, what is the word I'm looking for? Mechanisms? Yep. Means? Mechanisms. Pathways? <laughs> That's the word. <laughs> Mechanisms. Yes. To bless us. Um, to be our resource and he, he sources them for us, Yeah, but he doesn't need that. Yeah. And he, one of the things I've experienced is that he loves to use people. Oh yeah. Not in a, <laughs> he's not using them in the way we use them. Um, <laughs> well, hopefully we're not using them. True. But, but he loves to 
connect his people. He loves to use the body of Christ to meet those needs. There it is. And there it is I, right there. there's a, a local bookstore. Actually, if you're in Hayes or the Hayes area, if you're in Plainville, um, there's a bookstore, it's a Christian bookstore mm-hmm. that shared on their Facebook page. They said, we have 96 rolls of toilet paper wow. that we are willing to give away. No strings attached. No strings attached. All you have to do, you can call us if you don't want to come into the store. We'll come out to the car and bring it to you. They said for individuals, it was a certain number. For families, it was another number. And that is someone supplying Mm -hmm. what God has blessed them with Mm -hmm. and allowing it to bless other people. Allowing, And so God, like sovereignly by his grace, put that amount of toilet paper in the possession of people so that when this would happen, they would be able to share it. That's right. And And, yeah. Sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. So, like traditionally, the church has been that place that God has resourced in order to bless others. Right. And so like for our brothers and sisters in, um, if you don't have a church family, now is a time where you need a church family. You yeah. need people who love you and who love Jesus mm-hmm. and who are willing to share their last because that's who the church is. That's right. who the church has always been. Yeah. Um, it's because of the church that we have things like, or had things like hospitals and orphanages mm-hmm. and, and old folks homes, like nursing homes. Like yeah. the church stepped up in these times and said, you know what? There's marginalized people that nobody else wants to deal with. Mm-hmm. So we're going to give and we're going to, um, be a resource yeah. because God is our source yeah. without stressing and being like, well, if I help these infants, then, you know, I'm going to, not going to have time and I'm not going right. to have money. And I'm not, God says, don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. You do what I've asked you to do. And I can replenish whatever you're, you yeah. can't outgive God. Yeah. And so, um, hmm. the, the question that comes to mind, I see you, you've got the verse open and I'm going to jump yes. to it real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. The question comes to mind is where does your help come from? Yeah. So I've seen a lot of people sharing the scripture on um, a lot of people sharing more scripture now than I had Praise God for several uh, months. Amen. And one yeah. of them is Psalm 121. And in it, it says, it's a song of ascents. It says, I lift my eyes to the hills. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. Hmm. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Amen. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you. Go, yeah, keep your going out and your coming in mm-hmm. from this time forth and forevermore. And this, this is an image. Like, I love the St. Patrick's p- prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me. Christ, mm-hmm. like, it's su- such an image of like this all encompassing God yeah, who is in all and with all. And scripture talks about this, but this, this is an image of a God who is caring for your every move. Yeah. And like, if you really believe that Mm -hmm. if you really know God to be the one who keeps you, who doesn't sleep, like how we go to bed at night and everything has to stop in our life because we're asleep. That doesn't happen with God. He does not sleep on us. He doesn't keep you on red. (laughs) <laughs> like he, he is the one who, who keeps all evil from coming to you. And he also guards your heart against the evil that you're inclined to do to others. And so yeah. like this Psalm, I love that people are sharing this. They're usually sharing just verse one and two. Mm-hmm. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. But like, what does that mean to you? Yeah. Yeah. Like, so the Psalms of ascent, like these were, we understand, we, we believe these were the Psalms that they would sing as they were on their way to Jerusalem for mm. the different, um, different festivals. Right. Yeah. And so, um, when you're heading up into these mountains, a lot of times these people are on foot, they're, mm-hmm. they're pulling wagons, they've got donkeys and sheep or whatever they've got. And now we just, you know, put it in overdrive and hit hey, the gas. Like or we don't even get in the car. We just yeah. ask for it to come to our house. Exactly. But what, what they had to do, they had to go on foot a lot of these times and, traversing a mountain is a real life challenge. Mm-hmm. And so as they were looking at this mountain, it, it wasn't like, Oh, I look at this mountain. How pretty it's like, no, this mountain represents something that is huge. That is daunting. Yeah. That is draining of my life resources that mm-hmm. might possibly injure me. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at this thing that is, that I can't go around that I can't change. And I'm looking at, and all I see is the challenge. Hmm. But as I'm looking at this, I have to understand where my help truly comes from. Yeah. Because it's not going to come from my my willpower. It's not going to come from the strength of my legs. <laughs> my help comes from the Lord yeah. who created everything, including this little bitty mountain in front of me. Yeah. And so like 
as we're looking at, a lot of us are dealing with mountains in our lives, whether it's a, a mountain of, of fear, whether it's a mountain of anxiety, whether it's, it's a mountain of, well, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to provide for my family. I don't know what this, the, what resources I can actually gather. But we have to understand that uh, whatever mountain you see, it is not the mountain in front of you that's the true issue. It's yeah. where is your help? Yeah. Like, are you looking to the true source mm-hmm. or are you trying to figure out how to do it on your own? So mm, that's good. Well, and um, I haven't rep- got to preach in a couple of weeks. Rep- so. <laughs> do you need a pulpit? Do you need to stand <laughs> I'm, up? I'm just <laughs> jumping in. Um, that image of um, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth or who made heaven and earth. Yeah. If you know the story of, of creation, you know that God made all things from nothing. Mm-hmm. So it's just another reminder when we go back to the beginning that it's not just yeah, he's the God who makes stuff. You know, he, he he makes things happen. He he puts things together, and he mm. you know no. This is the God who manifests life. Yeah, from speaking it into being. That's right. This is the God who is limitless in being able to make your situation work for your good. He's limitless. He is he is unbound. Mm. Where we are bound, where we see the limitations, God has none. None. Zero. Zero. Zip. Zilch. All he has to do is speak. Nada. And. <laughs> Sorry, I'm <laughs> feeling it. I was feeling it. And it happens. You also haven't been in a congregation for a while. Period. Period. Amen. Amen. Big facts. Preach. Yes. Yes. Um, so uh, this brings to this this idea of abiding, right? So as Christians, we have, this is where it comes from. It's not part of the Christian worldview. I'm mm-hmm. um, looking at the world through a scarcity mentality because we are abiding in Christ consistently. And so what abiding means, you can use the word dwelling, you can use the word residing, um, staying connected to, um, yeah, sheltering in place. This is something that like language we're using right now with the coronavirus going around, Mm -hmm. but this is the, the DNA of the Christian. We are supposed to be sheltering in, in the place of God consistently. Yeah. And so, um, Jesus tells us in John 15 that we have to abide by him or abide in him Mm -hmm. because he says what, apart from me, you can do nothing. Right. And so Jesus is telling us, look, I am the vine. You are the branches. Mm -hmm. Like you have to stay connected to me because I am your source. The second you start to look for other things, the second you disconnect from me to find another source, you will shrivel up. Yeah. You will stop bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. You will be consumed. There's nothing about that that's going to bring more. Yeah. And so um, this idea of abiding is part of our DNA as Christians. Yeah. And so we can't look to the shelves at the local grocery store and be like, well, I guess I'll starve to death. No, right. no, we believe in the God who created everything. Mm-hmm. And as we abide in Christ, as we stay connected to the vine, then he starts to manifest things in our life. And this yeah. isn't prosperity gospel, name it and claim no. it, but I'm saying how God act, uh, sorry, actually and accurately. <laughs> I was trying to say two different words. Accurately. Like I say, accurately, <laughs> accurately and actually works through his people, through the body of Christ, yeah. through the mechanisms he's already put in place yeah. um, to serve the body. Yeah. Um, one of the examples I can think of most recently of that in this community, we live in Plainville, Kansas, if you're not aware. If you don't know, now you know. Um, the local grocery store actually approached the Ministerial Alliance and was like, hey, yeah. got an idea, don't know how it would work, but we would like to be able to deliver groceries to people. In our community, we have a lot of elderly folks. We have a lot of people who are immunocompromised and we have a lot of families. And so the grocery store, like the manager of the grocery store was like, how can we make this work? And it has been set up to where now two days a week, people can call in their orders and groceries can be delivered to them. Yeah. They don't even have to leave the house. Yeah. And so like through like a person reaching out to a local collection of pastors Mm -hmm. and saying, how can we do, how can we serve our people? Like, that's how God provides. There, there Amen. are people who, until then, were probably in their homes like, what am I going to do? I, I can't go to the store. I'm not supposed to go. And yeah. especially people who are watching only the news and are being fed that. And they're seeing the scarcity in the grocery stores because that's yeah. all over. Um, this is now a way that the church can step in and volunteers are able to be the hands and feet of Christ. And so yeah. we're not saying like you got to go and start a program in your neighborhood or whatever. Unless God's calling you to do that, then right. do it. But just to show you like, God does allow for us to step into the gap for others and, and vice versa. Um, and that just, just, you know, John 15 is that scripture. I'm going to read some of it. Yeah, go Um, He says, uh, I'm the true vine 
and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in mm. me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Mm-hmm. Already you are clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. You and then he That's goes right. on. He says, "I am the vine; you're the branches." And then at the very end of this, he says, "These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full." And this is just a picture of like, God is not; he's we're not robots. Yeah, he's not saying you're the robot; I am the programmer. Amen. He's saying I am the vine; I'm the yeah. true vine. And he wants us to bear fruit. He wants us yeah. like he wants there to be reproduction happening and growth happening. Get it. Come on and, <laughs> and why? So that our joy may be complete. Another yeah. translation says our joy may be complete. That means lacking in nothing. nothing. Again, the provider of all, the creator of all provides that we may have all that we need and That's lack right. Nothing. That's right. And the fact that he says he's the true vine tells us that there's false vines. Oh, yes. Right? So there are false vines. There are things that you can put your faith in that will not sustain you, that will not abide in you. You mm-hmm. can try to abide mm-hmm. in your paycheck, but that Dow Jones is going to show you that you can't the abide NASDAQ. in it. NASDAQ. NASDAQ will not abide in you. No. I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> um, but Christ is the true vine. Yes. He is the one that loves and cares for us. Yes. And so we have to understand that scarcity is not in the Christian worldview. No. We serve a big God. I love Maya, Debbie, and my mom always. That's their mm-hmm. their thing. I serve a big God. Right. Now, I don't got no little bitty God. My God right. isn't contained by the NASDAQ. And I love Aunt Debbie one time. I don't remember what we were talking about. And she said. We were talking about cars. I remember this conversation. Were we? Okay. And she said, somebody said something to her. And then she goes, well, huh, your God is stupid. Yeah. Because no. my God, my God, I don't know about your God. Your God is dumb. But no, my God. What she provide. said was. Uh, <laughs> Something about she was trying to get her car fixed. She's like, I'm trusting God can fix the car. Uh-huh. And the person was like, Well, God doesn't fix cars. Like, Oh, oh yes, your, your God doesn't right. know how to fix a car. Well, your God your must God be is stupid. Because my God knows everything. <laughs> and she was serious. She was serious. She... Your God is stupid because the God that I is the God of the Bible. Mm. You know what I mean? But the, but even looking at that, like God. Yes, like when we, when we put our faith in a God who is dumb, who does not speak, who cannot make things happen. That's right. Like. Your God really is stupid. Yeah. If your God cannot manifest things simply by speaking it into being, I'm sorry, you need to abandon that God. Yeah. If right your God now. can't provide for you in the midst of chaos, if your God can't heal, if your God cannot um, work miracles, then it's let, it's not the God of the God Bible. Go. It's not the Christian God. It's not Jesus, Holy Spirit, Father God, three in one. It's not it's not him. It's not. And so um so yeah, yeah. you have to abide and understand that there is no lack. Now, that mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you're not going to feel the pinch. It doesn't mean you're not going to have to sacrifice. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean there's not troubles and trials yep. and, and tribulations. It doesn't mean those things don't come. Mm-hmm. But what it means is when you are abiding in Christ, when you are resting, knowing that God is your source, mm-hmm. it means that he's got you and you're cool. Even if you don't have it, you'll be all right. Yeah. You'll be all right. Do you have something? Oh, yeah, I got one. Go ahead. I got a couple. <laughs> Actually, if you... I love, I love my wife so much. Oh, so I got So another, right another scripture that people have been sharing a lot and this is non-believers and believers alike that have been sharing this. And I like I, I love it. It's Psalm 23. Oh, yeah, yeah, One yeah. of the most the best. popular scriptures that we have. And guess, just, just listen to the first few listen, lines of this um, one. You got me all ears. A Psalm of David. Mm-hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. Come on. I shall not want. What? You shall not what? I shall not want. Come on. That doesn't mean it won't be lack. It just means I'm not No, be no, want. no. Because... He makes me lie down in green pastures. Mm-hmm. He leads me beside still waters. That's provision right there. He restores yes, my soul. Yes, yes. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. That's protection. Even though I walk Come through on. the valley of the shadow of death, because it's going to happen, yeah. I will fear no evil for you are with me. That's companionship. Come on, Your now. rod and your staff, they come for me. That's more protection. Yes, yes. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That is provision. Come on. You anoint my head with oil. That's blessing. My cup overflows abundance abundance surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life security mm-hmm. and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever proximity come on now so read, some of you made that up you didn't have that written down i didn't have it written down God, i just so know good. i just know this song because this is <laughs> this is our son's life scriptures this yeah. is the verse that we we speak it and pray it over our children yeah and you want to read psalm 24 and 25 while you're at it might as well. While you're there, because it talks even more about God being our provider and our sustainer yeah. through mm-hmm. adversity. That's right. That 
Ad Astra per Aspera is Kansas's state motto. Yes, to those the of you stars, who are out of Kansas yes, and are listening sorry. to this, first off, thank you Thanks for, listening. for checking us out. But Second of all, <laughs> that is our state motto yes. and it rocks. So, and it's not, um, it's not in the scriptures, but to, to understand that through adversity, we will still, we are being propelled into what God has for us, which is good through Amen. adversity. And this season is full of adversity for yeah. many people. You know what? Sorry, side note. Do you know what California's is? Because no, I'm a native Californian, y'all that didn't know. I didn't. Um, I mean, I did know that, but I don't know what the <laughs> motto is. Eureka. What does that mean? I found it. Oh, like gold? It's like the promised land, like bounty, oh. beauty, Eureka. So when you know Jesus, eureka. when you have come into the presence of the Holy One of God. Come on. Eureka. <laughs> I found it. Oh, uh, that's good stuff. We can make anything to a Bible. We should do a stump the pastor. We got to do it live. Oh, we got to right. do, do it live. Okay. Because otherwise we'll just be sitting here staring at the camera <laughs> and waiting for something. Uh, I'm guessing. What do you do? Have you seen, for those of you who haven't seen Robin Hood Men in Tights, you need oh, to. It's a great movie. Watch it. There's a blind uh, person named Blinken and uh, he's a lookout at one point. And he's like, Blinken, what are you doing, man? Uh, guessing? <laughs> <laughs> I guess no one's coming. Um, awesome. So here we're going to give you some practical tips. Um, yeah. And this is stuff, just ways to live out this abundance mentality. Mm-hmm. Um, first off, be kind. Um, what that means is think of others before yourself. Whew. Being kind means not hoarding uh, for those who might be in need, not being fearful of people that just two, three weeks ago you weren't worried about, Mm -hmm. but all of a sudden now it's me versus them. Yeah, Being kind is looking at everybody and seeing that everybody is struggling. And as a believer in Christ, we are supposed to be, we're called to be the light in the darkness. We're called to be the hands and feet of Christ. And so being kind in such a time of scarcity where people are worried, where people are fearful, Mm -hmm. being kind can be the most um, anointed proclamation of the gospel some people will see. Yeah, normally we've we've talked about before how you don't have to what is it? Share the gospel at all times and if necessary use words. Something like that, yeah. Um normally like I would say, eh, you kind of need to use words. But I think in this season like using your actions to do that. Yeah. is much more a picture of the gospel. Yeah. Um and sharing is caring. share. Like yes. do what we taught each other in kindergarten. Right? Share. Yeah. And do you have enough for others? That's yes. right. Invite people. If you can safely feed people, feed them. Mm-hmm. If you can provide or share resources with people, share mm-hmm. your resources with people. Um, the church has historically been the place that steps up when the world goes to heck in a handcart. Oh, uh, sorry. Sorry for the foul language. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so offended. <laughs> um, but no, the church is really the place yeah. where, where this happens. Yeah. And so, yeah, be kind, share. Yeah. Um, be creative. We mm-hmm. serve a creative God. We just yes, talked about how he is the creator. He makes all things and he loves to work in our minds to create new ideas. Mm-hmm. This is, I know I've already like seen so much innovation yes. in this short time. I know this is going to be super, one of the, the most awesome. innovative times for the church mm-hmm. and for our culture. Yeah. So create something, yeah. even if you don't share it right away. If you have like an idea that God gives you, do it, Yeah. do it. And you can share it when it's time to share it. Well, and because God works in our creative imagination. Mm-hmm. So instead of trying to figure out, Um, well, I've always done things this way. I've always had, um, this product. I've always Mm -hmm. had this way to entertain my children. I've always had this time to myself. Well, you don't know more. (laughs) So now, now you got to figure out what, yeah. Yeah. So God may not provide you with the same thing that you've been relying on, Mm -hmm. but he's provided you with a creative imagination that you can utilize through his Holy spirit. And he will give you, he will provide for you sometimes through your own imagination Yeah. to be like, they say, what is it? Um, um, necessity is the mother yes, of, invention. of invention. Yeah. And so it's true. Use your imagination y'all. Yeah. Uh, stay rooted in Christ. I know we say this a lot. Mm-hmm. He is, he is your source. Yes. Uh, but practically that looks like getting alone with him. And let's be yeah. honest. Some of y'all ain't got nothing better to do. They ain't got nothing to do. Um, Except for watch our podcast. Right. I mean, that's okay. But <laughs> you need to be alone with your creator. Amen. And right now, if you can do it in nature, if you can go outside for a walk and just speak and then listen, don't Mm. just, don't just speak. I mean, I know he loves to hear us, but 
shut your mouth and listen. Yeah. And be rooted in what he says to you. What what he says when God speaks, he will not go against his word. So know that. And when he speaks, he will do so in a way that brings clarity and life. Yeah, there's no confusion when he's not bringing confusion to you. He's not bringing right. chaos to you. He's bringing peace and life and abundance to you. Amen. So listen to your father. Yeah. And then uh, another practical tip: uh, stop hoarding. I'm just gonna say I'm just gonna say it, y'all. Um, scripture says, "Don't store up your goods where moth and rust destroy." Um, it's, y'all gonna be looking real funny, y'all that got sixty thousand packs of and, toilet paper in your basement floods. Eggs. I was just, I was like, you know what? <laughs> if you live in a flood prone area, uh, or you don't know flood. if your house will right. flood, or you don't know if you have mold, right? You're gonna feel real silly in a few feel, months. That's right. So it's springtime. Stop hoarding. Share. Allow people to and stop going and buying up everything. Buy what you need for your family. Sorry, that's just me. That's right. Well, anyway. and part of that is like prepare. But don't panic. That's right. Believe that God is in control. Yes. And that he's got more than enough. Yeah, and be wise. Yeah. Be wise in the way that you prepare. Yeah. Don't be stingy. Don't. In church, yeah. it's time to be the church. Mm-hmm. Um, what that means for your context, I can't tell you. But I can tell you that God didn't stop moving because Corona hit. Right. Jesus is still moving. He's still saving lives. He's Mm -hmm. still performing miracles. He is still doing what he does. And so what the church needs to do is look and say, okay, where is God moving and how can we participate? Yeah. And one of the things you can look at historically is, uh, you know, Google, you got Google right there. (laughs) Get Um, get on the Google. Check out what happened to the church in different times of um, physical sickness, Mm -hmm. economic distress. Look at countries where the church has boomed in the past, I don't know, several hundred years and see what was happening socially? A lot of times when the church rises up, mm-hmm. it's in these times where people are despairing because of what's happening around them. Because now, church, you have the opportunity to live out the faith that you have mm-hmm. been proclaiming and preaching. Yeah. Right now, people are watching you. They're saying, okay, do you really believe this thing that you've been telling us to believe for the past however many years? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Let's see if you really believe this. Yeah. And so it's time for the church to be the church. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, great practical tip. You can watch and listen to and share this podcast. Come it on is now. you all know, y'all Come know on. our stance that we want to entertain, educate, and empower as many people as possible right. through a biblical worldview. So what that means is we we know Christ is our king. He's our Lord. He's our, mm-hmm. our savior. And we want to share the truth that we know can set captives free. That's right. In a way that appeals to the culture. Uh, we don't water it down there are people dying Mm -hmm. who don't know Christ. And we know this happens all the time. This is always a reality. But when there's an urgency, we just feel it differently. We feel an urgency that if someone, and we've had people listen in other countries, if someone in uh, China gets a hold of this podcast somehow, and here's the truth of the gospel that God is their provider and their sustainer, they don't have anything to worry about in the midst of trouble. Think about how that could shift a paradigm. Just, no. I'm just, just using my holy imagination yeah. here. Think about how it can shift the paradigm. And my argument for it is, come on. <laughs> I mean, just come on, man. Don't hoard it. Just come share on. it. <laughs> I mean, come, one time for your boy. Like, come on. All right. Well, um, be uh, sure to listen in next week. We are going to continue yeah. to bring you um, as much Christ-centered, real-life no myth as we can. Um, stay tuned for uh, live concerts on yeah. Facebook. Mm-hmm. Keep track of Kylie Joe Music mm-hmm. on Facebook. If you do not have Facebook, um, I don't know what to tell I you. I don't know how you're managing. No, it's all good. Um, but keep track of our YouTube page. Um, and guys, comment, email, text. We love to hear from you. We love to talk with you. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's all we got. All right. This has been the Nick Smith Podcast. We hope you've gotten a dose of real life. No myth. Be blessed. Be blessed.